mean, that cock won't be shown for the rest of the The Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting of Tuesday, March 10th, 1998 is called to order at 7.30. The first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first item on our agenda is any adjustments to the agenda, and due to what we have ahead of us after this regular school board meeting when we go into workshop, we are suspending the principal's reports for this evening. Are there any other adjustments? Okay, first would be the approval of, of the February school board meeting minutes. There is one of February 10th. And there is one of February 23rd. I'd move that we accept the minutes of the February 10th and February 23rd uh, superintendent's reports of our meetings. Okay. So there are no adjustments? So we don't need a motion. They just stand. Great. Okay. okay. Next would be the comments by our high school school representatives. Matt Martin, Jr. to take those high school. Ryan Moore, Jr. We've had two meetings since the last board meeting. Uh, we've had a February break in between. Uh, uh, first thing we uh, was on our minds was the parking issue. Um, as you know, the first thing we did was break off into a Subcommittee, um, and they ca and they uh, came up with an initial plan that involved signing parking spaces. Um, and the the word about the plan got out uh, very quickly, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of students were uh, worried. I guess that it would take away some of the freedom to park. And, uh, you know, it's been so long that everyone's had the ability to park wherever they wanted. I guess uh, people were very unhappy about it. So um, the next meeting we had. Uh, there was so much controversy that one of the SAT members had gotten this word from the students that they didn't like the plan. Um, and you really, the plan had to have the support of the students or else it just doesn't work. So there was enough controversy so that we formed uh, two subcommittees because um, we voted on it and the SAC was split right down the middle. So we came up with another subcommittee that was uh, a group of kids who were opposed to the first plan. Um, the idea was to try to come up with some sort of compromise that maybe the student body would uh, appreciate much. Um, so we met with uh, Mr. Ely and uh, a few of us who were opposed to the original plan, um, discussed uh, different uh, options and uh, walked around and looked at all the available parking spaces um, and discovered that it really was, we even brought along uh, one of the students who was discouraged by the first plan and uh, we were able to convince him uh, pretty quickly that it was the only way to go was to uh, actually assign the parking spaces. Well, assign is kind of a bad word. We were going to have a lottery and number all the parking spaces. Um, but we were unable to convince enough of the SAC members that the students would uh, go along with the plan. So we uh, changed the uh, entire thinking into just uh, letting the students know where they could not park and simply telling them that if they kept continued to park illegally, the uh, police would deal with it. And uh, that way it kind of um, let them have their freedom, but at the same time, uh, kind of uh, let the police take care of it, and cut it out of our hands. So uh, that was where we've been from there. And it's, uh, we kind of we handed out flyers <coughs> where they could park uh, in certain spots in the, in the bus lot and the Orphan lot, and it's worked pretty well so far. Yeah, surprisingly enough, um, all we had to do was tell the students where they could park rather than park illegally, and um, the numbers have gone down from about 15 to 20 cars parking illegally on the grass sometimes. Um, to virtually next to nothing. Over the past few days, we've gone out and noticed maybe one car that, and it's, they're not even parked on the grass anymore. And um, 
we would have gone to assign parking, but so far we haven't felt the need that we had to. And we've also asked students to register their cars, which is something that we really haven't made um, haven't uh, showed, we haven't made students do in the past, and that now we're asking them to. Um, at our last meeting, it was a quick meeting, we brought up the uh, issue of student involvement and we proposed that we would have a pep rally for spring sports, which start, <coughs> preseason starts two weeks from yesterday, and we decided that, uh, decided that perhaps a pep rally and a dance to go along with that would be a good idea to raise student involvement during um, the school year. <coughs> um, as, for, as far as winter sports, um, we've, we had a lot of success, a lot of fun um, since our last meeting, all our sports have uh, wrapped up. Um, the boys' basketball and the boys' uh, hockey teams both did very, very well in the playoffs. And um, the girls' swimming team won the state championship, as uh, did the last weekend at the, the debate meet. Those teams swept the state championship there. Uh, we have spring sports that are starting uh, two weeks from yesterday. I was looking forward to that. We have uh, MA, MEAs coming up soon. Um, there was a three on three basketball tournament. Uh, the first ever organized by the Basketball Boosters. It was a huge success, uh, lots of fun. Um, and also there's a one-act festival coming up this weekend we're gonna host. Stay tuned. Any questions? Oh, just to ask about the parking. So are the uh, seniors all set with the pool parking? I don't understand. You don't know? Uh, the, the whole issue the parking came up was because the seniors couldn't park during the day to use the pool. Oh. I, I think everything there. We haven't heard any complaints. Give me this. Senior, senior citizen. Senior citizen. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Senior <laughs> citizen. Yeah. Sorry. The senior <laughs> citizens. Part. Yeah. We. Uh, I, I expect that if they had a problem, they'd probably call town hall more than the school. But uh, we haven't heard anything, anyways. Maybe Pete has. I think no. I, I think it, so far uh, uh, we've been uh, fine, <laughs> and uh, Dwight was going to, in fact, request that we get markings for a few more spots uh, that are reserved for pool use, and we do feel that we have, we still have enough spots uh, with those that have been marked off for non-student use. We still feel that we have enough spots for everyone, so we're trying the least restrictive uh, method first, and, and thus far it seems to be working. And I think that. Uh, that the uh, pool use spots are uh, are staying uh, vacant. Great. And uh, please keep the kids informed as more get their license in the spring where it is legal to park so that it doesn't blow up again. Thank you, Ryan and Matt. And next, our middle school representatives. students will have their national French exam. Last Wednesday, the 8th grade band went to the Capitol in Augusta, and we played there. And starting today, we are having a magazine drive for all the grades. And our grades closed last Friday, and we'll get our report cards this Friday. <coughs> the girls' basketball team has their last game this Friday. And also, our school talent show for grades 5 through 8 is tomorrow at 3.30 and also at 7.30. <coughs> are there any questions? Thank you, Sarah and Chelsea. Uh, next is communications. I think I can speak for the board uh, in congratulating the girls' swim team for their, uh, mm. their state championship win. Uh, that certainly comes from me personally. I'd also like to recognize all of the students who went out and played for Cape Elizabeth and represented Cape Elizabeth uh, during the winter sports season. They did a, an excellent job of representing the school, the town, and themselves. They really put their best foot forward. I appreciate the support of the administrators who, and all of the faculty members and the other students who came to watch the games and also represented Cape Elizabeth. Elizabeth very well. Uh, finally, I'd like to comment on Sean Russo, our first year ice hockey coach, who, as some of you may know, was a 
collected by his peers as the uh, Class B Conference uh, Coach of the Year in Western Maine. Uh, quite a significant achievement for someone in their first year with us. Any other communication? I would just like to announce that the school board has requested an opinion from the Attorney General relative to a conflict of interest issue involving a member of the school board. Anyone else? Any other communication? I just, I just have a comment uh, with regard to that matter. Um, uh, this is a matter that we have discussed and I wish to go on record uh, to register my dissatisfaction uh, with the handling of uh, the conflict of interest matter that uh, was just mentioned. Uh, specifically that an opinion is being sought by the State Attorney General with regard to a possible conflict of interest on the part of a board member. Um, it's my opinion uh, that a disservice is done uh, to the public uh, and to the board by failing to disclose appropriate and relevant details regarding this potential conflict of interest. Um, it's further my recommendation to the board that we convene again uh, in executive session and determine to disclose the details of this matter and I only wish that to happen to the extent possible without breach of confidentiality and or interference with any due process action that's ongoing. Uh, the purpose is so that the public is aware of what this potential conflict is. Requesting an opinion from the Attorney General I think is an appropriate action. However, it does not offer any resolution to the matter in the short term. Um, absent what I believe to be reasonable and appropriate disclosure to the public, I will move to have the board consider more immediate action to address this potential conflict. I'll be happy to share a copy of this statement with each of you. Any other communications? Okay, seeing none, we now move on to committee reports. First is the Finance Subcommittee. The Finance the Committee. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Actually, I only have two items, and one of them kept and sort of covered. I did want to uh, particularly recognize the girls' swimming state championship, and I think Carrie is here in the, Carrie Curtis, who is the coach, is here in the back of the room. Right. And I'd like to give her a round of applause. John well done. With a lot of help from the girls, right? <laughs> uh, the only other thing I have is to announce to the board that the calendar meeting in Gorham has been rescheduled for March 31st at 7 p.m. That's the meeting to look at possibly our calendar on a, re on a regional basis. We'll also get you a written notice out closer to that time. And that's all I have. My apologies. Uh, now we move on to committee reports. The first is the Finance Subcommittee and the Chairman is... <coughs> Thank you. Uh, we met briefly before uh, this board meeting, uh, signed some warrants, and discussed a uh, $40,000 deficit in our, our school food service program. Um, that's a result of some uh, expensive equipment purchased, as well as about an $11,000 balance uh, that, uh, for students' lunches. Um, I know you get the notices. Uh, either by mail or your sons and daughters bring them home. Uh, we need to get all of that money paid in. That's, uh, as I said, is over eleven thousand dollars right now that we have a deficit there. Okay, we now move on to the policy subcommittee and the chairman, George. The uh, policy subcommittee met on February eleventh at seven forty-five in the morning. Um, the agenda was to follow up on IGDR, which was the eligibility for student participation in co-curricular and athletic programs um, and uh, basically uh, we had a discussion that was at the last uh, formal meeting of the board and uh, policy IGD and IGDR uh, which is essentially the same name as what I just said uh, the eligibility for student participation in co-curricular ath and athletic programs were revised and they were merged into one policy um, the revisions were made consistent with the board's direction and discussion on February 11th, which was our last formal meeting, and the final draft was uh, prepared uh, as uh, a second reading for this evening. Uh, we were also to talk about some efforts of the time study that uh, agenda item got um, tabled, and um, 
we were to attend a, a meeting at Gorham, and now apparently that's been rescheduled. It was a, uh, a stormy day. Um, the other piece that we discussed was MSMA policy models uh, on the topic of fundraising, uh, and models were shared uh, with committee members in preparation for a policy discussion uh, at the March meeting, which will be tomorrow at 745. Um, that happen, that uh, meeting will happen, as I said, uh, tomorrow in Council uh, Chambers Conference Room at 745. Okay, we move on to unfinished business and right into uh, first reading of a policy on administrative guidelines. Um, actually, these are all second readings. Okay. Uh, and I apologize for not catching that earlier. Um, what presented this evening uh, are uh, two, two transportation-related policies. Um, they are second readings. Uh, the board members all have copies of these. Uh, in uh, bold type are the changes. The first is EER, Transportation Services Management, um, which provides a clear specification um, in terms of the responsibility of the superintendent uh, to provide transportation for all students. That's actually students kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, and then an additional paragraph has been added in terms of bus routes. Do you, me, do you want me to read that, Charlie? No, everyone has seen it and read it. Not unless there are any changes. I'd like to just sort of couple this one with the next one, which yeah. is a, another transportation related. Um, uh, it was some semantic changes and um, being a little bit more clear about emergency policy, uh, emergency procedure. And this is policy EEAC, uh, the administrative guidelines for school bus safety. And there again, I won't go through the details. Um, I have two comments on that. In D, um, it says, once the police officers have arrived on the scene, you are to request. Um, shouldn't it be the driver is to request? Yeah. And, and also in C, you, you've started all of the other um, comments with the driver will. And C is the only one that starts with never leave the scene of the accident. So it doesn't say who. It probably should say the driver will. This is um, uh, presented um, grammatical challenges for us, this entire thing. <laughs> I think we should have just sort of trashed it and started again. But um, that, that, of course, makes sense. So everybody understands the changes, suggested so changes on C, the driver will never leave the scene, and on D, <coughs> um, the driver is to request that they double check. Can I, can I make a motion? Yes, you may. Um, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we accept the, the revisions uh, to the policies that I just reviewed, EER and EEAC administrative guidelines. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Move on to uh, the co-curricular athletic programs and high school eligibility requirements and administrative, administrative guidelines, athletic rules and regulations. Um, what, we, uh, what we had basically were um, two pieces of this policy. Uh, it, it became a, a, a bit confusing, a, a bit um, bogged down in lots of language uh, that was perhaps not needed. Uh, this has to do with co-curricular and athletic programs and high school eligibility requirements. Uh, we essentially um, took the uh, uh, eligibility requirements piece and um, I, I think that we sh shortened it, kept all the, the right things in. Um, and, and basically merged uh, the, the um, IGD and IGDR, which were um, extracurricular and athletic programs, along with eligibility for student participation in, in co-curricular and athletic programs. Um, also, uh, what has come before the board for the second reading 
uh, would be equivalent to the version A that was discussed um, at the last meeting, which does not um, uh, preclude or does not set a limit on the number of probationary um, periods or probationary, um, uh, the number of times that a student would be in probationary status. George, do you just want to say that if this policy passes tonight, it still wouldn't go into effect for the next calendar year? Right, and that was always the intent, was that we would Next school year. Next school year. Um, that we would work on this, um, that we would keep the policy intact, and that our intent was for a change um, in September. The fact of the matter is the other policy that's related to this, which are the administrative guidelines, um, the only change to that um, really is just referencing this first policy. Um, the IGDJ dash R4, athletic rules and regulations, um, used to say in number one, to be eligible to participate in interscholastic athletics, a high school student must pass, must pass all subjects. And pass all subjects has been replaced with must comply with the eligibility requirements as specified in file IGD, co-curricular and athletic programs and high school eligibility requirements. This does not impact um, <coughs> the middle school either. Okay, for the rest of the board, this, this kind of meet what we um, recommended back to this policy subcommittee and rewriting. Is there enough understanding and no is there an agreement that there's no substance that's changed to the, to the policy from its first reading, other than some clarification? I, I guess I'll just state again, I think there was enough substitu substantive change, um, just even in language, that it should have been another first reading, but I can let that go. I just think it's a matter of public notice, even if we knew. Um, that it was going to be changed so much. It's, it's a drastic change um, in terms of the language, but I can, I can live with that. Do we have a motion? I move that we accept policy IGD and policy uh, and administrative guideline IGD-J-R4 as recommended by the policy subcommittee. Second. OK, any discussion? I'll just state I, I will vote against the policy. I, I'm not in support of it. I could have supported something that had a limit on the probationary periods, but not something that was as unlimited as this. When we have a, a policy that's only been in place about uh, eight months that is working, we're seeing no athletes um, uneligible for sports and maybe one student who's not eligible for co-curricular. Um, it's the first time we really have a lot of those kids passing all their courses. So I will vote against it. Any other comments? Uh, did you say there was no students ineligible for sports? That was what Keith reported last time. Yeah, Pete. Uh, just, there, are, there are two students. Uh, there are 30 students who are ineligible. Uh, none of those 30 were participating in a winter sport, athletic activity. Two were participating in uh, um, non-athletic uh, co-curricular uh, activities uh, and have been made ineligible. Uh, three uh, of the 30 are, uh, will, will be ineligible at the time of tryouts for uh, spring athletic uh, activities. Um, we have talked, uh, Keith has talked with the coaches about allowing them two weeks later to still try out. So we, we are still hoping that, uh, that they earn their, if they are eligible at the, uh, at, after the third quarter grades. Um, do want to point out that the two students who are uh, ineligible for the uh, non-athletic uh, co-curricular activities are, I think, represent very good examples of, of the type of thing that I would be afraid of in our current policy or in a policy which, has, which sets limits to the number of times. Both students earned a failing grade 
in an honors course that they wanted to try. Uh, I think the result of limiting the, uh, the number of times, would, if that happened in a student's freshman year, that basically is, uh, I, I, the students have already said to me, I guess next year I won't try to qualify for a class that I wasn't originally recommended for. I appealed last year, wanted to try this course, and have been succeeding in the other quarters, but uh, slipped up this quarter. And I think that's exactly the kind of situation that we don't want happening, where students end up saying, no, I don't want to take risks anymore. I'll take a class that I'm sure I can uh, succeed in. Uh, I think we defeat the purpose of setting higher standards when we, when we discourage students from trying. I, I agree with the premise of the policy that we need to give a second chance. Um, I have a similar question to Beth's, though, as to how many second chances uh, should we give. Uh, being that, I think I'll probably vote against this policy. Anyone else? I think, um, I think one of the, the concerns, and uh, I had spoken to some parents, uh, about the fact that um, you, you know, we were no longer going to have a strict eligibility um, eligibility requirements, and I guess I'd just like to say publicly that, in my mind, these are strict eligibility requirements. Um, we've uh, done a couple of things, and I do respect the, the opinion of the other board members who feel strongly um, about limiting the, um, uh, the number of probationary periods. I, I don't happen to feel that way. Um, I do believe that uh, the way that we learn is by uh, it being afforded an opportunity to take a risk and risk and perhaps make a, a mistake. Uh, the other nice thing I think that this um, this does do is it really does put some onus back on the student uh, to take responsibility in a situation where they're uh, not passing a, a course uh, to really um, only go on probation if they do take the initiative and work with the teacher to create what we're calling a recovery plan. Um, so. This by no means, again, in my opinion, uh, reflects uh, a, a, a set of eligibility requirements which are lenient. John? I'll be voting in favor of it. I think the policy committee has spent uh, a lot of time rethinking this, come up with an excellent uh, suggestion. I believe it falls in line with the recommendation of the uh, faculty as well as the students, and I'll be voting in favor of it. Anyone else? When we initially addressed this over a year ago um, and changed and actually upgraded our, our um, requirements for graduation and the number of minimum courses that students were taking, I was concerned about students having to pass all courses, six or more. Um, I think that what the policy has done is proved that that in general, probably 98% that the students have 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 led up have um, have. Con I'm sorry, I'm tired tonight, so just bear with me. Um, that that students have risen to the challenge to balance their academics with their extracurricular activities. I know that our students participate in many and multiple and I commend them because they are successful. I, for one, would, would have liked to have seen um, a less, allowed some opportunity for, for um, a failing, but you know, I, I, I find this hard to, um, to agree to and probably will not uh, vote for it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Four. All those opposed? Three, four, three. The, policy, the new policy passes. I also would like to thank um, the student body, the SAC, for their initiative and um, the presentation. I was there when they made that presentation, <coughs> and um, I am glad to say that I am a school board chair for a school district which has students who uh, can show effective use of a political process and thank you.
Holly, can I make a comment? Sure. Having strongly supported this new policy, I'd like this opportunity to remind the students that it's academics first, and also to urge the coaches to stay as closely involved with your charges as you possibly can. Thank you. And also, <clears throat> my, my thanks to our policy subcommittee, because I know there have been many, many hours over the last two years on this one policy alone. And I thank you all. Uh, we now new, move on to new business, consideration of the superintendent's nomination for spring 1998 athletic fee positions. Right. We have Joe Henriksen as the varsity girls softball coach, Carrie Curtis as the JV girls softball coach. Uh, on your list, you have a nominee for the eighth grade softball, but that person has withdrawn. Seventh grade softball, Wayne Bridgham. Seventh grade baseball, Creed Ray the third, and then. Continuing coaches, Paul Casey from middle school track, and Aaron Balistreri from middle school track as well. And before you move on that, as I mentioned, we are still in need of an eighth grade softball coach, and also, for those of you who are watching at home, a JV girls lacrosse coach, a high school girls tennis assistant, middle school tennis, middle school boys lacrosse, and middle school girls lacrosse. And we have advertised those positions, and thus far our without candidates, so if I put Keith on the spot, he probably would speak to it more strongly, but we're, those seasons are rapidly approaching and you are in need of those coaches. All right. Would you like to make a plea? <laughs> I don't know what more we can do. <clears throat> so if anyone's out there listening and knows of someone who might, would, might fill those, um, those positions or make, make good candidates, please send their names on to the <coughs> athletic director. Okay, do I have a motion? I move we accept the superintendent's nominations for the athletic uh, <coughs> sports coaches. Do I have a second? Marie? Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you. Consideration of requests for maternity leaves. Yes, we have three maternity leave requests, very nicely spaced, one per school. At the high school, <coughs> Sonia Medina, uh, who wishes a maternity leave for the remainder of the school year. At the middle school, Therese Roberts, for the remainder of the school year. And at Pond Cove, Lisa Martin, for the remainder of the school year. And Lisa is also asking for leave for next year. And I am recommending that all of these be approved, but with the caveat for Lisa Martin that she is a half-time teacher, and we cannot, since we have so few half-time positions, that we cannot guarantee her exactly the same position that she is leaving. Uh, she may have to take a position that more approximates full-time, but that we would accommodate her in a position. Do you have a motion? I move that we accept the three maternity leaves as presented. Do we have a second? Marie? Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Uh, reaffirmation of the 504-ADA policy. And I would just like a motion to reaffirm the, the policies that you have in your packet. We are going to be working on those and making some changes, but I would like to have on record the fact that, that at least we have these in place and this is what we have been functioning uh, with. And for clarification, these are Cape Elizabeth Special Education Department Section 504-ADA policies. And they are Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. I move that we reaffirm our Section 504 ADA policy. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. And in your packet, you have a request for the spring baseball trip, and hopefully the information is complete so that you are able to approve that. Uh, for the public, it is a proposed extended athletic trip for the varsity baseball team. Um, they would be traveling to Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, this will be the fourth year for the team to travel. Um, it, it, uh, they will be, do, be traveling between March 27th and the 29th. Um, 
They will be located at the Eagle Hill School in Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, the fees and costs are being um, taken care of by the Baseball Booster Organization. Um, there is the overnight accommodation. The athletes will stay in dorm rooms at the Eagle Hill School um, while Eagle Hill is on March break. And on Saturday, March 28th, Kate will play Norwalk High School doubleheader. And on Sunday, March 29th, Kate will play Greenwich High School. And the chaperones will be their coaches, Jim DeMillo and Matt Harbour. Uh, athletes participating will be the varsity team whose members have not yet been chosen. This meets the format for suggested athletic trips or co-curricular trips outside the district. I move that we um, approve the uh, proposed extended baseball trip. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Okay, before we adjourn to go into workshop, uh, dates to remember, uh, the school board policy subcommittee will meet tomorrow morning, March 11th at 7.45 in the council chambers conference room and on April 15th at 7.45 a.m. in the council, council chambers conference room. Our finance, finance subcommittee meets again April 14th at 6.30 in the Council Chambers Conference Room and followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30. We will have a school board workshop meetings on Tuesday, March 24th, 7 to 9 p.m. in the high school library. And the topic will be a continuation of the 98-99 school budget. And there will be a school board meeting with Finance Committee of the Town Council on April 15th at 7 p.m. in the council chambers, which will be a review of the school budget. And the town council finance committee meets April 6 at 7 p.m. for a review of the community services budget. Do I have a motion to adjourn to go into workshop? I move that we adjourn and go into workshop. Second. All those in favor? 7-0. And for the, for the benefit of the parents who are here, I recommend that we do athletics and then co-curricula since those are related and then do technology last. <clears throat> and the things we will be covering will be athletics, technology, and if uh, there is time, um, the uh, district-wide. We'll take about a five minute recess to get organized. Yeah. No, that's...